Welcome back to another Electro Technology video. Today we are going to learn how to install one of these. This is a GPO, a general purpose outlet. Or if you look at the ASNZS 3000, it calls them socket outlets. And this particular one is the one that you would see in any given domestic dwelling, commercial dwelling. So the first thing we are going to need is going to be some cable. This is TPS cable. It is 2.5 millimeters cross sectional area thick. Uh, and that is rated up to about 20 plus amps. We can check the ratings of our cables in the AS NZS 3006. Um, and that'll give us an idea of what cabling we should be using. But generally, if you're looking at maybe a domestic situation or even most commercial situations, you're looking at running a 2.5 millimeter cable for GPO circuits because GPO circuits are rated at about 16 amps. So this cable will comfortably carry 16 amps re regardless of where it's being put. There is a thing called derating the cable uh, and that refers to where the cable gets run. So maybe a cable is getting run through a roof space and it's in insulation, then there's gonna be more heat and therefore the cable rating actually drops. If it was running in conduit in the ground, it's gonna be very, very cool. So therefore the rating, cable rating improves so you can put more amps through the cable. Again, that's the sort of things you need to check your standards for depending on the installation and the work you're about to do will depend on the cable size you need to choose. So for this example, 2.5 it is, we're going to use this cable and we're gonna hook it up to our GPO and hook it up to our RCDs and neutral and earth points. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is make sure we have got the correct size cabling. Um, Remember, we want to work sustainably. We don't want to be wasting any cable. So, you know, make sure you measure your cable correctly. Measure twice, cut once. Um, this cable here will be long enough for what I need to do. It's just a piece of uh, cable offcut from previous work. Keep your offcuts, don't toss them away. You never know when you're going to need them. You can see it's already been pre-stripped at one end. It needs a little bit extending down the other end, but that's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna start with connecting um, into the GPO and I'm gonna explain how that gets done. Most GPOs will be color coded. Excellent. Um, older GPOs may not have that color coding. So if you are working in a situation where you are having to reuse an older GPO for whatever reason, please keep that in mind, but they will be labeled active neutral earth. Now, if they are not labeled active neutral earth, you can still work it out by using your multimeter on a continuity setting where you can put your meter probe into the front of the GPO and then tap on the terminal strip at the back of the GPO. If it shows continuity, you know that is the correct terminal strip. And that way we can work out which one is active neutral and earth. Remember, earth is always at the bottom. So, you need to strip your cable. If you have not watched the uh, video on how to strip and terminate cable, please do so. Now, if you have watched that video, you are probably noticing right now that I am actually doing something incorrect, and it's the way I'm actually holding my pliers. I am touching the conductive part of the pliers, um, I am well aware I do that. That is actually a bad habit. Uh, it's a habit that I picked up when I was an apprentice. Um, and you do this because when you're, when you're originally working, a lot of times as an apprentice, you're not working on live equipment. So you just do whatever's comfortable and easiest. Now, because I am fully aware of my bad habits, uh, when I do work on live equipment, I am super careful and I'm always watching what I'm doing it's a good idea not to get into bad habits. So follow the way I do it in that other video um, and that way you will always be safe. Now, because I'm only wiring up one single GPO, you will notice that I'm not connecting other, any other cable. 
I am literally just going to twist and fold this cable over. Okay, so I have prepared this cable now ready to terminate into the GPO. However, this other end is going to need to go into my RCD and into my earth point. Um, so it's going to need to be a little bit longer because they have to split and go other ways. When you are wiring into a board on a domestic dwelling in New South Wales and Australia, you will find your earth will actually get connected to the earth, main earth cabling and it'll be bonded. So you'll be soldering it on there. Um, other places in commercial buildings, other states, you may also be connecting to an earth link or an earth bar. Um, for that, today's example, that's what I'm going to do, simply because if I had to try and solder it here on a bench, I wouldn't be able to move it anywhere. So I am going to put it to an earth point, which is where the main earth would be connected. And this is what you would find in commercial buildings. You'll find that a lot of stuff goes to earth points, which are in turn all hooked up to earth stakes elsewhere. So it is still all correctly earthed. Always double check, triple check your measurements. If you're unsure, always go a little bit shorter. You can always extend it as what I'm doing right now. You can't go back if you've cut it too. If you've cut it too much, you can't go back. You can if you've cut it too short. That should be enough. So I'm now going to, while I can, I'm going to strip and prepare these cables for termination as well. Generally, if you're working on a job, you would only be working with one end at a time because the GPO would probably be on the wall somewhere. The connection back at the board would be maybe another 20, 200 meters, who knows? So you'd only be working on one end at a time. So keep that in mind. Okay, now my other end has been prepared. Quite important, when you are preparing your cables for termination, if you have a very small terminal block, and this happens, you may need to kind of massage the ends of the cables, that is, give them a bit of a squash to make them fit. Um, a lot of light fittings you'll find when you're out there working, you will have problems fitting some of the cabling in. Especially if you're working on a rather large circuit and you might be using 2.5 mil cable, they just don't fit into the terminal strips and then you have to make some adjustments. But we can talk about that in another video. Okay, done. Ends are ready for termination. So now I'll put this through to my GPO and then I'll put this other end into my RCD. As mentioned before, active, earth, neutral. Match them up, put them in, making sure that you are not getting any excess conductors, copper exposed at all. The insulation should be up against the terminal strip. Also, you don't want the insulation going too far in. You don't want the screw biting down on the insulation because that can cause a poor contact point, um, which we call a hot joint and a hot joint is basically when the current tries to jump from one contact to the other and it will get hot, melt, cause a fire. We don't want that to happen. So please make sure that you are screwing in your conductors correctly and that you're not leaving exposed copper and the insulation is not being clamped down by the screw. I should also point out at this point that I'm kind of doing this in a fairly quick way. Be mindful where your hands are. 
Make sure that you are not touching any copper. Make sure that your hands are not going anywhere near any copper. So the way I'm holding this GPO right now is perfectly fine because I know there's nothing connected. But if I was working on a wall in a building, I wouldn't hold it like this. I would hold it like that because I don't know. Something could happen. Somebody could turn on the circuit. Somebody could take my danger tag off. Not that they're allowed, but they could. I don't know if that's ever gonna come on live. So always treat, when you're wiring, always treat it as if it is live. If you do that, you'll have no problems. Now, the other thing you want to be mindful of is you should always leave a little bit of slack cable, especially in a wall cavity. In a wall cavity, you should actually loop it down. So if I hold this up, so if I put my cable into a wall, I should be looping my cable down like that. And the reason we do that is because if for whatever reason that water gets into that wall cavity and lands on the cable, it's gonna run down and drip off the bottom. It's not gonna go into the back of the GPO and cause problems. So when I tuck that into the wall, in the back of the wall, it would look something like that with a dip going downwards and this going up. So now this can now go into my RCD and into my earth point. So the active gets connected into the bottom of the RCD and the neutral gets connected to the bottom of the RCD as well. There are two spots that are identified as active and neutral and that's where they need to get connected into. Always tuck your cabling up. Again, leaving a little bit of slack of cable in there so that if you ever have to come back and do some work, maybe you get a hot joint, there's a problem with the, the RCD, you can come back and trim that back. You've got enough cable there to work with. So always leave a nice little loop. That's done. Cover goes on, screw your cover down. Now I'm gonna to go to the earth point. On this demonstration board, we have put the earth point just like a neutral link. We didn't need to connect a neutral link up to that because the RCD will already have the neutral going to it. If not, please see the video on how to install an RCD. So at this point, the earth comes in. As I said before, if you're living in New South Wales, in Australia, and you're working on domestic, domestic buildings, the rules there state that you need to bond the earth to the earth stake. It's basically basic standards. Um, other, other, stand, other states may have different standards. I don't work in other states, I don't know. If you're working on commercial buildings, you're gonna have something like this. So what we do is just like we would do with our neutral for the RCD, again, in that video, is we match the earth up to the same number of the circuit. So in this case, we've gone to the 16 amp RCD and that it would be our second circuit. That's our main switch, one, two, that's the second circuit. So then this will go into our second point. There's my main earth, so then one, two, that's where it goes into and I would then feed that in. Now, as I mentioned before, that's kind of a little bit hard, it's not going in correctly. What I need to do with my pliers, I need to just give that a little bit of a massage just squash it down a little bit, making sure it's still nice and folded, but just a little bit tighter. So now when I put that in, it should go in fairly nicely. If you're finding you're having a little bit of trouble with that, you can use your pliers to hold onto the bottom and just give that a bit of a nudge. Hopefully it'll go in. Again, if you're having problems, check your screws, make sure they're screwed all the way out. Sometimes that's not the case and the wire can catch on the screws. Now it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of copper sticking out of this terminal strip. This is obviously only an earth anyway, so it's hopefully never gonna be live. It shouldn't be live. Not to say that you can't get a fault live earth. I have had that happen and it wasn't me. I went to a job and we had to remove an oven and we found that somebody had connected something up incorrectly in the circuit and the earth was live. 
how nobody got killed, amazing. Very, very, very lucky. So, always, always treat everything as if it is potentially live. So I'll put the cover back on, just to protect it. And there we go, GPO installed. Very important if you are installing on a wall, this is just a demonstration board, but if you were installing on a wall, you would put your level on here and you would level it up before you screwed it tight to the wall. Always level your equipment, make it look neat. And when you finish the job, always tidy up after yourself. Clean up your mess, vacuum clean if need be. If you don't have a vacuum cleaner with you, ask the person at the property who owns the property, hey, do you mind if I borrow your vacuum so I can clean up? Many times they may say, no, no, it's okay, I'll do it, but you should always offer. And if they give you the vacuum cleaner, you should do the job. Clean up, tidy up half yourself. You should be walking out of that building like you were never there. Easy. Now, if I had to hook up a second GPO, all I would need to do is attach another TPS, active, neutral, and earth, to here. I would obviously not twist the cables and fold them over. I would leave them stranded, twist the two wires together, put them into there, bring the other one out at the next, next point where you need to put the other GPO and connect it up. And you simply just keep daisy chaining, daisy chaining, daisy chaining, however many GPOs you need. That's it. Hopefully you got something out of that video. I'll see you next time.